Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. We've made it past Thanksgiving, or a Thursday in late November, as it's known elsewhere in the world, which means we can now guiltlessly bedeck our halls, engage in unfettered gift buying, and put on that one Mariah Carey song that we secretly really like. Just because we are one step closer to 2021's tremulous climax doesn't mean I'm gonna take a break, though. I'll save that for Christmas week. And the tech news has continued to pile on with stories of DDR5 scalping, GPU pricing and availability shenanigans, chip fab rumors, and NFT nonsense. So to prevent all these stories from getting backed up, which could cause a painful blockage, I will gently but firmly massage the tech news tube so the information can ooze out in a pleasing and palatable fashion for my eagerly awaiting viewers. If you're into that sort of thing. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the new Lightwings fans from Be Quiet, which combine legendary near-silent operation with optimal performance and, of course, RGB lighting. Control the look of your PC with up to 20 addressable LEDs per fan, and choose from standard PWM for airflow or PWM high speed for use with radiators and heat sinks. They're available in 120mm and 140mm sizes, and suitable for any build in need of a functional and tasteful RGB upgrade. So for more on the new Lightwings fans from Be Quiet, click the sponsor link in the video description. We begin with some scandalous but still unvarying rumors about more GPU price hikes, this time dictated by AMD themselves, who have bumped up Radeon RX 6000 GPU prices by 10% if discussions on the Chinese board channel forums is to be believed. That equates to a 20 to 40 US dollar increase in base cost, and although the change would theoretically only affect new shipments of GPUs, prices have been going up already, either in anticipation or just because that's how the GPU market goes in 2021. There has been a 9% average price increase for AMD cards in November already, and holiday demand won't help turn that around anytime soon. The supposed reason behind AMD's decision is TSMC increasing their wafer cost, as reported a couple months back, but other TSMC 7 nanometer products like AMD Ryzen CPUs haven't seen similar moves. It's almost as though there aren't extraneous factors like crypto mining affecting those prices, so they've been forced to stay competitive with Intel. GPU prices have been steadily increasing since late summer though, with Nvidia cards also getting 7% more expensive in November, but with steady availability, there's still one clear culprit as to the high prices, and that's crypto mining profitability. And the best indicator that these supply and demand issues are fairly unprecedented can be seen in the John Petty Research Report issued this week, showing that GPU shipments are down 18.2% since last quarter, with AMD down 11.4% and Intel down 25.6%. Nvidia surprisingly managed to increase shipments by 8%, although as mentioned, this has not helped retail prices in the slightest. If there is a a silver lining to all this, it could be that consumers seem to have accepted that 2021 will not be bringing a return to normalcy for the GPU buying market at all, allowing them to move on with their lives and focus on something with higher odds of success, like winning one of the epic gaming PCs that are up for grabs in giveaways in Q4, like the system that I just built last week. Giveaway kicks off this week, so get subscribed and stay tuned. Another way to cope with the dismal PC gaming hardware landscape is to focus on distant future tech that will definitely launch after all these shortages are over and global peace and harmony has been achieved. There's a lot of anticipation for AMD's promised CPUs with 3D vCache launching in Q1 2022, but trademark filings with the US Patents and Trademarks Office have indicated another potential application for the die stacking technology in GPUs, which are mentioned 23 times in the application versus CPU references, which only count up to one dozen. AMD has had success with boosting the cache stash in GPUs before, a la the Radeon 6000 series, which sport up to 120 28 megabytes of Infinity Cache, allowing them to keep pace with NVIDIA GPUs, even though they only have a 256-bit memory interface. It should be noted that trademark applications often contain broad language to encompass a range of products that may or may not actually come to market, but given AMD's bold predictions about how 3D vCache will improve gaming performance by as much as 15% on the CPU side, it's possible that adding the tech to GPUs could improve latency and performance even further. As more and more people consider upgrading to Intel's latest 12th Gen Core processors, which have the option of running DDR5 memory on boards that support it, a new bottleneck has appeared, DDR5 memory supply, which seems to be just as constrained as GPUs in late 2021. Retail prices are already double or more versus comparable DDR4 kits, and I already took issue last week with third-party marketplace sellers on Newegg listing kits marked up to four times their MSRP. With all legitimate outlets sold out, however, listings on eBay and other resale sites are going for over $1,000 to upwards of $2,500 for a 32 gigabyte DDR5 kit. And 
people are actually buying them, at least according to Tom's Hardware, who says 15 kits sold last week in that price range. There is, of course, a legitimate reason for the shortage, as DDR5 uses a Power Management Integrated Circuit, or PMIC, on the module itself, and those are unavailable, even to large memory manufacturers. Three vendors contacted by Tom's Hardware said the PMICs are the culprit, and production lines won't be spitting out new kits until next month at the earliest, with one brand saying that they'll only have 300 units for the entire global market. Naturally, scalpers have now entered the chat, and they'll be leveraging this shortage to maximize their profits for the time being. But keep in mind that even if you really want to upgrade to Alder Lake, you can easily do so with a DDR4 setup, and you won't even suffer from performance loss across most use cases. Check out my 12600K review for my DDR4 versus DDR5 testing if you'd like to see for yourself. Moving on to some crypto news, we have further proliferation of NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, thanks to Macy's, who decided to celebrate its 95th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade by creating 10 unique NFTs based on their iconic parade balloons. Auctions are still live, at least as of the filming of this video, with bids ranging from around $14,000 to upwards of $300,000 per NFT, which, just to be clear, are short digital animations of balloons, not the balloons themselves or anything of actual worth or value. Personally, I've been shocked by how quickly NFTs have gained popularity this year, not just as a topic of discussion regarding the concept of ownership or the idea of a truly unique digital artifact, but that people are apparently willing to spend absurd amounts of actual real-world money on them, even if that money is cryptocurrency. I guess I should have seen it coming, though, as I did formerly play Diablo 2, and I saw how much people were willing to spend on in-game weapons back then. Although, to be fair, if that Wind Force bow you picked up helps you power through bail runs more quickly, it's arguably more valuable than any NFT. Those Macy's auctions end Tuesday, though, for anyone who wants to keep tabs on their progress, and I guess the proceeds do go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is a good cause, but I still reserve the right to grumble about NFTs being dumb. One surefire way to get a bunch of saps to buy into your new cryptocurrency is to give it a pop culture theme, though, as shown with the Squid Game crypto from the beginning of this month, but thankfully this one has been blocked. The JRR Token, named for J.R.R. Tolkien, author of The Lord of the Rings, which was a transparent attempt to capitalize on the franchise's popularity, with promotional websites featuring hobbit holes and wizards that definitely aren't Gandalf. One day after the JRR Token crypto launched back in August, the JRR Token estate filed a complaint with the developers through the World Intellectual Property Organization, who have now ruled in their favor, successfully blocking the crypto's use of Tolkien intellectual property. Associated websites have been taken down, and the only question remaining is how to deal with that fool of a took, Billy Boyd, the actor who played Peregrine Tolkien who promoted the crypto back in August on Cameo, apparently for like 150 bucks in compensation. Billy seems to have been reading off a script at the time and hasn't mentioned it much since, so perhaps he will simply remain an honest fool, in the words of Gandalf. Anyways, you need people of intelligence on this sort of mission quest thing. Rounding things out with the crypto coverage, we have news from Sweden, where the directors of the Swedish Financial Supervisory Authority and the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency have penned an open letter regarding Sweden's ability to hit their Paris Climate Agreement goals. In it, they call for an EU-wide ban on proof-of-work crypto mining, for a ban on new crypto mining operations, and blocking companies that trade and invest in crypto assets from describing their businesses as environmentally sustainable. It's a notable call to action against mining from a source other than China, who has also banned crypto mining recently, but it's also important to specify that these are not official agency statements, but the musings of the directors of two key agencies who have influence in the matter. Whether this leads to further decisive action in Sweden, or the EU in general, remains to be seen. And now we briefly quick at tech looks, or something like that. Have you ever wondered why we don't see more ARM-based Windows devices? It turns out that Qualcomm and Microsoft actually have an exclusivity agreement that has made development of products by other manufacturers challenging. Fortunately, that agreement will be ending soon, although a specific date hasn't been revealed, but that could mean more inexpensive and power-efficient portable devices based on current-gen SoCs, as well as more competition for existing x86 solutions like Intel and AMD CPUs. The Qualcomm agreement has been in place since 2016, but 2022 could see a proliferation of alternative Windows-based PCs, or even running Windows on something like an Apple M1 chip. Oh my gosh. 
Speaking of competition with Apple, the tech giant has apparently been using their vast cash reserves to reserve themselves more of TSMC's manufacturing capacity on upcoming nodes like 5 and 3 nanometer, causing dismay from the likes of AMD and Qualcomm, who also vie for those spots. AMD might even be considering switching fabs, and is rumored to be in talks with Samsung about their 3 nanometer capacity, although this info is based on hearsay for now. It will all boil down to who can promise more wafers to Team Red, who needs more chips than ever for use in desktop CPUs, GPUs, and consoles, as well as their burgeoning lineup of server parts. Apple does seem to get special treatment though, so it's understandable. I mean, when was the last time you heard about an iPhone shortage? New chip fabs could help the global supply shortage though, and while they take a while to get all built up and operational, Samsung has taken another step towards breaking ground on their planned 17 billion US dollar US-based facility by choosing Taylor, Texas as the location. Announced Wednesday, construction will begin in the first half of 2022, creating 6,500 short-term construction jobs and 2,000 long-term technical positions. The location was chosen over competing options in Arizona and New York, and the fab will be larger than Samsung's other US-based facility in Austin, Texas. Questions do linger about the Texas power grid, however, which suffered a massive multi-day outage in February 2021 that cost the Austin plant an estimated 254 to 339 million US dollars. If you're looking for a good way to monitor Twitch chat or keep up with your news feed but don't want to invest in a second monitor, consider this super tall 7x32 aspect ratio display from Elsonic, a sub-brand of Japanese company Nojima. It's an 8-inch screen that connects via HDMI and is powered via USB-C and the 420 by 1920 resolution would sit nicely next to a laptop's 1080 display. It sounds like it will only cost about 130 US dollars as well, although you'd need to travel to Japan to get one or have it shipped, which would increase the price. Or just get four of them and stack them horizontally and you can get a 1920 by 1080 display with huge bezels and a higher price. Actually, don't do that. That's a, a bad idea. Here's another update. The YouTube dislike counter has slowly begun to disappear for many users of the service, but some held out hope that Linus from Linus Tech Tips would save us all by talking to YouTube, convincing them of the error of their ways, and then we'd go back to seeing that useful like-dislike ratio on all of the videos. Well, that's not happening, as Linus reported Saturday that he did have that meeting, but YouTube basically gave him the PR response, gentle placation, while ignoring all the relevant feedback, meaning that we are all doomed and platform backsliding will continue. To end things on a positive Positive note though, here's a reminder that Steam's Autumn Sale is on right now, so you can add to the vast library of games that you've never played before for even less money than usual. You can vote in the Steam Awards for 2021 as well, or just trip out on the weird Shroom-themed artwork that they've gone with this year. Why do some of these characters have no faces at all, while other characters have way too many faces? Why do these trees on either side seem to grow forever and have groups of leaves that seem to look strangely like countries on a map? I don't know the answers to any of these questions, but somehow I want to buy more video games. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and thanks for joining me today, I hope you enjoyed it. Closing reminders, your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description. If you're interested in further reading, you can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, including new designs as well as new merch for the holiday season, including some hoodies since the weather is getting a little chilly out there. And subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week.